Okay, good afternoon. It is 5.30 in the afternoon on Monday, 10.28. Uh, Paul Formica, again, we're coming to you with another uh, update uh, and giving you some information. Uh, clearly, uh, you see what's happening outside. Things are ramping up a little bit. Uh, the latest uh, 4 o'clock uh, conference call from the state and the governor uh, indicates that uh, Hurricane Sandy is going to hit landfall a number of hours sooner than they anticipated. I'm sure you're seeing that uh, on uh, the Weather Channel. Uh, they expect it to hit in the next hour or so, uh, but what that has done is accelerated the wind speed uh, for us at the top north end of the storm, and that wind, as you know, runs counterclockwise and is now driving uh, wind on the Connecticut shore and also keeping the tides uh, from releasing back. So we're beyond the midpoint between the earlier high tide and we're now uh, working our way to the new high tide at approximately 10.30 uh, or 10.55 this evening. So there are the problems that we're going to have. Sustained high winds over the next few hours combined with sustained high tides. And so those of you in those low-lying coastal areas that are still in your home, keep a good eye out. Uh, and remember this, there are a number of trees down and most of those trees have wires in them. And something I learned this afternoon out uh, on Walkabout was that when there is a wire on the ground and the ground is wet, it will conduct electricity such that it could seriously hurt you or kill you if you're within 50 or 100 feet of that uh, on the wire. So don't venture outside. Stay in where you are. There are trees down in two locations on Route 161 making that impo impassable. There are trees down in two locations on Route 156 making portions of that impassable. There's a, a large limb across Route 1 beyond Lover's Lane making that impassable. So we need you to stay where you are in your home, do the best you can. We expect the meat and potatoes of this storm to be over in the next five or six hours. But again, we have a number of trees that are falling down uh, on streets and sometimes on houses. The wind speed is such that we have pulled our staff off the street for patrolling and are only sending them out uh, into uh, the direct and extreme emergencies because again it's dangerous for them to travel outside of 60 mile, mile an hour winds. Power is going to be out. We're about 80 percent of the town of East Lyme is out of power at this point. Uh, we have CLMP crews on site, but again, they can't go out and get up in the bucket above 40 miles an hour, so we have to wait until things settle down a little bit. But the good news is that CLMP has been better coordinating with us and have been on site on a number of these problems and are doing the best they can to do the best they can. Here's what you can do in the meantime. Generators, if you're operating a generator, make sure it has plenty of air, carbon monoxide, even in a garage, if you think it's safe rises and it will be just as lethal inside a closed garage as it is inside your home. So make sure it's well ventilated. Make sure that it's been installed correctly by a licensed electrician so that you don't have any back feed issues. And two, again, if you happen to see a down wire and it happens to say that it's been checked and it's been deadened, we're finding instances where these generators are backing themselves up into these wires and making those pre uh, previously declared uh, dead, uh, making them live again. So treat every wire you see as a live wire. We have our shelter available, East Lyme Middle School. Again, it's a multi-town regional shelter, Lyme, Old Lyme, Montville, East Lyme, Waterford. We're helping out New London. They're sending some folks over there. We have some pets. That will be probably for tomorrow after the storm. We don't really want people out moving in the situation this evening. Again, the time of this update is 5.30. Our wells, we have well, one well is down uh, due to lack of power. We have two water wells uh, operating on general uh, generators and we have three at this point operating normally. Our sewer pump stations, some are threatened, but they're running uh, on schedule and uh, just you know use as sparingly as you can. Uh, expect uh, many roads to be closed. Expect uh, high, high tides at 10 o'clock. Uh, let me see if I can get everything else here. Uh, 
Six anything you're forgetting? Eric, am I forgetting anything? Okay. We are expecting to see record flooding of Long Island Sound, flooding to exceed the 38 hurricane. So let's not mess around with this. Let's hunker down. Uh, know that we have a team on staff here uh, and that there's ways for you to get information on Facebook. It's the East Line Public Safety Facebook page. Uh, we have a website, uh, eltownhall.com. Is that going to be active with the server down? Yes. So, that, so this and other information will be on that website. And again, the Facebook is the East Lime Public Safety, Public Safety Facebook Public page. Safety. And you don't have to be a member, I guess, to be on that. And uh, uh, so try to get on that, get information. As long as you do have power, Channel 22 uh, will be on, but we're not sure how long that's going to last. If you need to talk to somebody, 860-739-4434. 3-4 is the number here at EOC. We're here. We're going to be here. We're going to monitor the best we can. Right now we've done everything we can with regard to uh, being prepared for this. We just have to wait and see what the storm brings. And then we wake up in the morning, we'll figure out the best way to get over it and to rebuild uh, what's happening. But for now, that's the update. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for working with us. Be safe. Be calm. Everything will be okay, and if you need us, again, call 739-4434, and we'll get some help to you. So thank you. Uh, have, a, have as good a night as you can, and be safe.